Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organization for inviting me here to talk about uh, my work, which is uh, about uh, integrated chronic care in uh, patients with atrial fibrillation. So what I want to talk about like the management of atrial fibrillation, and part of that is um, uh, anticoagulation and stroke prevention. Um, in Maastricht, we developed this, uh, this clinic, so the key points to present are the unmet needs in atrial fibrillation-related stroke prevention and anticoagulation prescription, possible solutions in practice, the integrated chronic care model, and I would like to share some results of the AF clinic study that we, particip that we performed in, uh, in Maastricht with you. But first, I would like to, uh, like to take you back into history and focus on the uh, um, EuroHeart survey on atrial fibrillation. And this survey was conducted between 2003 and 2005 in 35 European member countries and incorporating more than 5,000 patients. And the aim of the study was to, uh, to study the management of atrial fibrillation throughout Europe in terms of diagnostics and therapeutics. And the results of this study were quite shocking because the survey demonstrated that there was really a poor guideline adherence. And to give you an example, you see here the um, uh, antithrombotics prescription according to the CHATS2 score. And what you see is that about 50% of the patients in the low-risk CHATS score, so 0 and 1, receive oral anticoagulation, while in the high-risk scores, two, 2 till 6, the same amount of patients receive oral anticoagulation. So there's an over-treatment in the low-risk category and an under-treatment in the high-risk. And with this, the EuroHeart survey demonstrated the poor guideline adherence. And even more, it, it demonstrated that poor guideline adherence was associated with an increased morbidity and mortality. The Maastricht University Medical Center in Maastricht um, participated in this study, and we thought from that point it was time to do something for these patients. And we came up with a new care program, the Integrated Chronic Care Program. This is an outpatient clinic for patients with atrial fibrillation, and it consists of four major elements. And the first element is substitution of care, so that nurses work closely together with the cardiologist, but also take work over from this cardiologist. So in the AF clinic, the nurse is responsible for the coordination of care, but also for the education of patients. Then the treatment and the diagnostics, so the management of atrial fibrillation, is according to the evidence-based guidelines. And these guidelines are incorporated in a dedicated software system, of which I'll tell you more in the next slide. And then the overall fourth uh, uh, element is the supervision of a cardiologist. Because in the AF clinic, uh, the patient will only see the cardiologist with the first visit. So during follow-up, the nurse is in charge and the cardiologist is available for um, supervision. And in this slide, the AF clinic in daily practice is portrayed. And it's quite a busy slide, but I'll try to, to highlight a few things. Um, before patients uh, visit the, uh, the outpatient clinic, they undergo a protocol of clinical tests consisting of echocardiogram, 24-hour holter registration, laboratory testing, and EKG. Also, we send patients an extensive questionnaire evaluating their uh, complaints, their medical history, the use of medication, and we focus on uh, signs and symptoms for anxiety, depression, and their quality of life. So all this information is put into this software system, and um, the system is not only an electronic patient chart, but on one hand, it's an electronic checklist to check if all the practical management procedures are adhered to, and on the other side, it's a knowledge system. And the knowledge system means that it needs a lot of information about the patient, so that is like the questionnaire uh, uh, factors, medical history and medication, but also the results of the diagnostic tests. And from there, the system is able to generate an individual risk pro profile. And this risk profile is based on the symptoms of AF, the thromboembolic risk, the type of atrial fibrillation, and the indications and contraindications for medication. As I just mentioned, the system consists of the evidence-based guidelines of the European Society of Cardiology. So and based on these guidelines and based on the risk profile, the system is even able to give a treatment advice. So you can, uh, we see it as like a navigation system that helps the patient and the user to guide through the whole care process. Back to the first uh, visit to the outpatient clinic. 
the, the patient will be seen uh, by a nurse. The nurse will take the medical history and will give information about the diagnostic tests. And then in the final uh, uh, minute of that, uh, that first meeting, the cardiologist will join the nurse and the, cardi and the patient to confirm the medical diagnosis and to start the treatment. So during follow-up, as I said, the nurse is in charge. So, but what is integrated chronic care in the AF clinic? Well, that is a lot of things that we could talk about, but I would like to highlight three items over here. And that is that we, we know that atrial fibrillation is a very complex disease and that the treatment is also very complex. So integrated treatment of this complex disease is very important. And it is not only the treatment of an arrhythmia, so rate or rhythm control, but also treatment of the underlying cardiovascular uh, diseases. And then, of course, prevention of thromboembolic complications and prescription of uh, anticoagulation, focusing also on lifestyle management. And another important issue is that there should be a professional relationship between this nurse and the cardiologist. And you can compare that to the aviation industry where pilot and co-pilot work closely together to guarantee uh, a safe flight. And actually the same is true for the care process in the AF clinic where um, nurse and uh, cardiologists work closely together to guarantee a safe care process. There should be some reciprocal reliance, and with that, it, it improves communication, and with improved communication focusing on guidelines, there will be uh, improved guideline adherent management. But the most important thing in this clinic is that there is a patient-centered approach. So we try to focus on the patients, try to involve them in the care process by uh, giving them a patient education, stimulating them into their self-management role, and there's also um, some space for shared decision-making. So patient education, we're focusing on like what is atrial fibrillation, them, uh, talking about symptoms and relate that to atrial fibrillation, possible complications, the results of the diagnostic tests, and also ab about several therapeutic options. And then we arrive on the, on the part of oral anticoagulation. And therefore we start with, uh, together with the patient to fill out the CHATS VASC score because this is an easy system to show the patient that they really need or don't need uh, oral anticoagulation. And from there, it's, it's even um, uh, easier to involve them in the care process and tell them what they can do uh, themselves in this. I would like to highlight this important uh, paper of the European Heart Rhythm Association uh, that arrived with the new uh, oral anticoagulation uh, products. Um, and in this uh, paper, there is this figure focusing on how you can set up the follow-up and uh, checks of the uh, um, prescription of oral anticoagulation. And I think the first part, so the initiator, initiation process should be a process of nurse and cardiologist together. But then the follow-up part, there I think you can really see the nurse uh, as a care coordinator where you check for thromboembolic com uh, uh, complications, bleeding events, other side effects, but also on compliance, give information, and the need for blood sampling. So there's an important role for the care provider actually where education is the key from both perspectives, so for the patient, but also evidence-based knowledge in the care provider. It's very important to promote adherent behavior as described in the guidelines and to invite the patients for active uh, participation in this care process. Uh, and I think, therefore, you need an interactive relationship with this patient. And I believe that this, um, this way of working fits uh, very good in the integrated care uh, approach and coordinated care approach in atrial fibrillation. We developed this uh, clinic in, in Maastricht. We were very curious about the effects of, uh, of this uh, uh, clinic. So we performed a randomized control trial uh, using probe design, and we randomized 712 patients with newly diagnosed atrial fibrillation in to the nurse-led care or the usual care. And the usual care was care delivered by a cardiologist without using the software system and without working together with, uh, with a nurse. Um, we followed these patients for at least one year, and the primary endpoint was a composite of cardiovascular death or cardiovascular hospitalization and also guideline adherence. And for this guideline adherence, we took the ESC guidelines. Uh, there are some practical recommendations that, uh, that you have to adhere to. Um, and what you can see in this slide is that in 80% of the patients of the nurse-led care, there was adhered to all six recommendations. 
versus 40% in the usual care, and this was an overall significant difference. And one of the recommendations was um, appropriate oral anticoagulation prescription according to the CHATS score. And it appeared to be that that happened in 99% of the patients in the nurse-led care versus 83% in the usual care, which was, again, a significant difference. By looking at the other primary endpoints, so the combination of uh, cardiovascular hospitalization and cardiovascular death, you can see here the Kaplan-Meier curve representing the cumulative incidence of this composite endpoint, which was 20.8% in the usual care versus 14.3% in the nurse-led care, which was a 35% relative risk reduction in favor of the um, AF clinic. So overall, this was a significant finding, but also looking at the separate uh, uh, endpoints. During the follow-up, uh, 48 patients in the nurse-led care were uh, hospitalized due to a cardiovascular reason versus 68 patients in the usual care, and four patients died due to a cardiovascular uh, problem versus 14 patients in the usual care. So this was quite uh, a significant and um, um, interesting finding. Looking at the, at the numbers, uh, however, numbers are quite small. We were able to demonstrate a reduction in stroke hospitalization and a reduction in uh, vascular non-cardiac death. And uh, in this uh, category, there are patients uh, involved with uh, the thromboembolic complications. So in summary, uh, I think a nurse-led AF clinic can promote uh, improved anticoagulation guideline adherence it protects patients from incomplete diagnostic and therapeutic procedures, and with that it can prevent, especially in this case, thromboembolic complications, hospitalization, and death. Uh, it's very important to promote an interactive partnership between cardiologist, nurse, but also the patient to involve in this process, and it creates uh, uh, possibilities for activation of self-management behavior, which will be more and more important in the future. So with that, coordinated care in anticoagulation is essential to support effective AF-related stroke prevention. Thank you very much. So thank you, Dr. Hendricks, for these very uh, promising results. So uh, you have general practitioners in your country, or? Yes, we do. And you never have uh, had problems with them in the past, so? Well, to be honest, in the beginning we had, because uh, when patients were referred to the hospital from a general, general practitioner and they, uh, they, saw the, um, they visited the nurse, then we had these GPs calling us and they said, I refer the patient to the cardiologist, not to a nurse. But then we informed them all and, uh, in, in our uh, region, so to say, and now they know that this is really, this is daily practice in our, uh, in our hospital. So, and with that, we try to, we're also now setting up like more a combination between first, like GP uh, practice and uh, um, hospital practice to work more together. But that's a difficult uh, task still. Thank you very much. Are there uh, other questions? <laughs>